Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to Rock Codes. Um, I just wanted to talk about a React topic real quick that I see a lot of devs uh, running into when they first get started. Um, and that is having to do with how you deal with passing props um, and dealing with updating state. So I wanted to do a quick example um, to kind of break down what I see happening and why I think it's happening and um, maybe even a reason why you may want to do things this way. So real quick, I have an app in Code Sandbox um, where we have some state here. Uh, it's just a number and we can mess with this input, this number input, it updates the state, it outputs the number. Okay, so next step, of course, what we would wanna do is have another component, uh, which would be, and we'll move some of this, this functionality out of this app component into this subcomponent. Let's say we wanna have, instead of having this input be part of our, our main app, of course, we wanna have, let's say, account input, if I could spell input. And that's just gonna return this same JSX here. So it's gonna now control that input box. It's gonna receive some props. Um, right now, we'll kinda ignore that. We have the set count still in our app component. Um, so this is the part where I think devs get confused or some devs get confused on what to do. So now I'm in this sub component. I have the props here and I know that I, I need to update the value for this count in this component now. So what I may try to do is well, I, I know I update React by updating state. So obviously to update this count, I need to update state here. So I'm gonna call this local count and we're gonna set local count. That's gonna be equal to use state. We're gonna give it props.count. Why? Obviously, right? Because that's how it works. You pass down props and then you update state. So then we're gonna take this local count. We're gonna put it here. And then we're gonna set local count. And we're gonna put that here. And then we'll take this count input. We'll use it here. Pass the count equals count. Boom. All work, it looks, looks fine. Let's see, so we have the input, we change stuff and wait a minute. So the state of the input is working, which is now in this count input component here, but it's not updating the state in the parent, which is no bueno. The way that React works is you have state, you use state within a component, and then you pass that state down as props to your child components. So with that in mind, let's try to revisit how we've uh, implemented this count input. So we're receiving props here and we've we've created this state in count input, but we shouldn't really need that. What we should do is just use our props. So let's say we have props dot count. We're just gonna use that value. But now how do we update the state from here? Well, uh, that's actually called lifting state. And that means we actually pass down a handler, I'll scroll up so you make sure you guys can see, we pass down the actual handler to update that count. So here in our on change, instead of this, obviously this set local count, we do props dot set count. All right, so now it works fine. So keep in mind, we have state in our app component which we have passed down to our child component. We also are passing a setter for that, uh, for that state to our child, which just uses everything from the props. Um, and this is how things should work. There is actually another uh, issue with putting props into state that we can illustrate here real quick. So I am going to copy this input back to our app component at the top level into the parent and we will fix it 
So now we have two inputs. One is in the parent, uh, this one here. And this one is in the child, I'm assuming, because this one is first. So obviously I can change this one and we see that this actually also changes the value in the child because it's using the props directly here. Now, let's bring back in this uh, situation uh, where we're passing the props into use state or setting it into state. Just so you guys know, all of this same stuff applies for class components, but I'm not gonna cover those because the video would be double in length it's the same situation though if you were to have class components and you get props you put the props into the state and you know this dot state where you initialize it you run into the same things so back to this situation in this child um if we put these props into the state so now you would think okay local count is going to be the same as the props right the props are going to come through it's going to update the component and we're going to have basically a, a copy, right? So let's go ahead and add a, I don't know, a P tag. We'll throw the local count in there. And, you know, again, we would expect like we're going to see uh, the value the same all across the board. All the counts are going to be the same. Let's see if that's really the case. So we, this is the parent. It's currently set to 10. We change it and we see that it updates. The child updates that's actually using the props directly here. However, that spot where we put props into state never will update again. And this is actually another thing I see happening a lot. You'll see developers, they're working on something, they're asking for help, they don't know why state's not updating in their component, and this is probably top three things that I, that I ask. Did you put your props in your state? Because this is how, it's even in the React documentation, this is how you break React in a certain way, in most cases. There is one particular case where you'd wanna do this, but here, you will never get another update from this parent component on this prop into this state variable. No more updates are coming through there. That's it. It's ignoring further updates completely. So that being said, uh, I guess now we understand that we have state and the parent. We pass that down as props. We use the props. We do not put the props into the state, except for one particular situation. <laughs> and that is, it's a rare situation, but let me switch to this other code sandbox I have. And I actually created this um, in trying to help someone. So, so what we have here is you have a basic app component. It has a, a use state, which is just text, or it's actually HTML in this case, because we're using this quill component. And I will switch over to that real quick. And this is actually just a, a third party library that gives you an editor, as you can see. And so basically in the parent, we have a change template function, which this part doesn't matter, but just know that this function, you hit this button, it changes the template being used by this editor. So that's the button here that we're clicking. This is the actual editor and we're passing a key which forces this component to update whenever this HTML changes. And then we're also passing the HTML. Now, looking at this editor component, we receive these props. We're setting text from those props. And you'll see in this case, we are putting props into our state. And this text is used as the value of the quill component. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we don't, we don't wanna control this whole text editor from this parent component. All we want to do is set whatever template should be in there by default, and then the editor goes on and does its own thing. We don't want to control it from here. So by, by receiving these props and putting those into state, we, we want to stop further up state updates on those props for this component. 
and we just want to we just want to set a default value which is what we're doing here so you hit this button you get a default value and then you can go ahead and edit and this is one of the rare occasions uh, or more generally one of the rare occasions where you do want to put props into your state is when you just want to set a default value for a child component and you don't care if that state is updated in the parent from there you just want to keep using a default value and that's it so um, i hope this helped you uh, if you have any questions feel free to reach out in the comments subscribe and like the video uh, if you found it helpful at all once again this is raw codes i want to help you make awesome things with code and increase your quality of life peace